Can we say that? Probably no. Say okay, fine. Do, 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 Cassidy Quinn. Hey guys. Okay, so I'm here with Destiny. A date with Destiny, as I, I would like to think of it. Never we're heard that outside before. of so original, right? <laughs> so we're outside of the movie theater. We're getting ready to go see Spider Man Far From Home. And you have the perfect shirt for it. Yes, thank you. Now I brought you along because you are our official, like, comic, Marvel, movie expert, guru at KGW. How excited are you for this movie? Thank you. It's lovely to be paid. <laughs> Uh, to be a nerd. I'm pretty excited. I'm really excited because I was telling you earlier that, you know, uh, things, a lot of things ended with Endgame and everybody was so excited to see that movie. So I'm excited to see where they're taking the Marvel franchise because they're not just going to leave it there. Right. They're going to put it on the shoulders of young Peter Parker. We're going to find Peter out. Peter Parker, who you're a big fan of. I, I am a big fan of. <laughs> <laughs> who is not though, really? Hello, How? Tom Holland. Okay, so you're like the expert. I am definitely not the expert, which is proven by the fact that Number one, I still haven't seen Captain Marvel. There's a lot of movies I still haven't seen. And number two, I did not know that Spider-Man was a hyphenated name until yesterday. So why is Spider-Man's name hyphenated? Enlighten the, the, the rookies. He's a, all. He's a Spider-Man. But so, like, Iron is an, he's an Iron Man. But that's, but he's like... Batman? Iron Man, though. Just like one but one. you know he's spider and a man yeah he's part spider part man okay so we last left the mcu marvel oh. cinematic universe i may have really only learned actually what that stand stood for when i saw endgame it confused me but so endgame happens and that was put up as oh this is the end of the avengers is the final thing but then it, it keeps going so what now what happens so it looks like my hypothesis, mine and everybody on the internet's hypothesis, um, you know, it's gonna open up a multiverse in this movie um, because the the bad guy Mysterio in this movie is from a different Earth, parallel universe. Whoa! And so that means that we can bring in a lot more characters from the comic books um, if we open up the idea of other Earths, which gets complicated in movie That's what telling. Seems like, I mean, like anything is possible. So like, yeah. people died in Infinity War. Spoiler alert. <laughs> but then. Like half of them are back. So then people die, like Tony Stark. Spoiler alert. But is he, will he be back? Is Robert Downey Jr. gonna be in this movie? No? Um, is he gonna be in this movie? I like hologram? Like, like he may be some sort of hologram or something that he left for Peter, because they definitely had like dad son vibes, you know? But uh, is he gonna be in the flesh in this movie? No, I don't think so. Robert Downey Jr.'s movie contract's expired. It's, it's like the, the sky of Portland is crying. <laughs> in mourning for to Tony Stark right now because it just started raining really hard. You can probably hear it. Is there anything else we need to like, what are the big fan theories? Are there big fan theories for Spider-Man Far From Home? Well, in the trailers for this movie, you see Mysterio and he seems like a good guy. So a lot of people are like, oh, people who don't read the comics or people who aren't familiar with, um, I don't know the way things go, I guess. They're like, oh, why is Mysterio like seeming like a good guy and what's gonna happen? So it'll be really interesting to see um, sort of either how he plays the good guy and the bad guy or maybe he goes insane, like what the MCU does with him and maybe we'll see some other, we're definitely seeing some other like classic Spider-Man bad guys so that's really exciting too. Spider-Man's been around for a long time, he's got a lot of good bad guys. But yes. I'm excited for Zendaya as, yeah. as Mary Jane. Yes. Um, I saw some press photos of her with her hair kind of red which would be really cool Ooh. because you know MJ is a redhead and I uh -huh. as a redhead appreciate that. But I love Zendaya <laughs> cast as her. A lot of people threw a big fit about it for the really? first movie because people are bad. People don't be bad. Don't be like, what's the bad guy's name? Mysterio. Mysterio. Don't be like Mysterio, okay? <laughs> We're gonna go see the movie now. Spider-Man Bark Bump. Yay. If only we had a web that we could just like and then we'd just be over there immediately. The whole car or just us? Because I don't want to get wet. But if we like move really fast, yeah, maybe the whole car. We'll work on that technology while we're in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so we're back from the movie. This is actually the next day because we got out of the movie. Well, I needed time to decompress, write a bunch of notes in my phone. Oh my god. I was like talking Novel. to my I was talking to my phone as I was driving home. It's like don't forget what happened in this movie. Mm. Cause that happens. Also, it was late at night, and I, I'm becoming an old lady. So we're recording this today at work in the daylight. Time for the. Can we say that? Probably no. Can say okay, fine. Okay, so I guess what what was your overall feeling about the movie? Did you like it? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I gave it uh, you know four radioactive spiders out of five. I hadn't thought of my rating system. But I really liked it a lot. I really liked it from the get go because if you start an action superhero movie with the first 20 minutes looking like a rom-com, 
I'm all in. Like a teenage rom-com, specifically. I felt like I was back in high school. Everybody was super cute. Also, we did see the beginning twice. Okay. In true, like, Marvel epic fashion. What they told us is the lightning hit the movie theater or something, there was a power surge. They then had a projector issue. They were like, yeah. it's a power surge, but none of the lights went out. All that happened was we lost the picture and had the sound. Uh-huh. So we could hear Tom Holland. Like it was before you even saw him on the screen the yeah. first time <laughs> and you could just hear his voice. We're like, maybe this is, is, is an effect. Maybe we're getting, you said a couple minutes before that, are we getting Rickrolled right now? Once you see the beginning of the movie, you'll think, wait, is this, yeah, is this real? I really like the beginning, so I actually like that we got to see it twice, mm -hmm. because then I went back and, and noticed things. But eventually they did play the whole movie. We did get to see the whole film, it was great. Or they were like, that's all you get to see before yeah. it comes out. We didn't yeah. trust you not to give all the spoilers away, so we yeah. just let you see the very beginning. Um, I forgot to tell you, I watched Captain Marvel when I got home last night. You did? <laughs> oh my god, you said it I was late. like, because when we walked out of the movie, I had multiple questions for Destiny, and she couldn't actually answer them. I was like, okay, but what about this? What about this? And she said, if you'd seen Captain Marvel, you would know what I what happened in this and what that's referring to. That is not the movie we're discussing here, but I'm right. just I just want everyone to know I am trying to catch up in in the MCU. You just <laughs> got the lingo. So did you were you into Far From Home right from the get go? Yeah, yeah. Um, it provided a healthy amount of teenage cringe. You know, like I was like I'm like an awkward adult. I was certainly an awkward teenager, and this really somehow just bottled that essence and released it into the movie theater crowd, which was. Great and also like, ugh, like it like gives uh -huh. you like a little bit of like the heebie-jeebies of like how obsessed you get with the people that you like and how like the whole like it becomes your top priority just to like how can I get near that person how can I sit by them how can I get them to what is their schedule do they like me can I hold hands with them I want to touch mouths with them oh like, my god <laughs> the hand holding the awkward like. Do, what if our hands just touched? Oh my god, wait, can I hold your hand? Are we gonna do that? Are we not gonna hold hands? My heart was beating very fast just for the teenage awkwardness. I do think the movie did a, a accurate job, I would assume, of portraying what it would be like if a group of teenagers went on a summer vacation in 2019. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of selfies, live streaming. It made me feel like I was on a, a stressful summer vacation with teenagers. Yeah, like I'm getting old, so like I'm like, stop, like Paige, you know what? I know. This, is, this is an experience, what are you doing? Like, But then I also did the same thing, I was like, oh, that would be me, I would be that one that's, that's a teenager, has my yeah. phone out the whole time, but I'm trying to learn to be better at that. It was a very 2019 movie. Yes. There were a lot of, like, oh, you're ghosting? Ghosting mm -hmm. references? Mm -hmm. Can we, like, are these things I can say? Yeah, I think so. Okay. There's a fake news reference. Mm -hmm. Like, Rude. the premise of the movie gets into it. It's like, oh, what's real? Mm -hmm. What's fake? What will people believe these days? Mm -hmm. <sighs> so it's a little depressing on that front. <laughs> I thought there was a good balance, for me at least, for what I like in the movies, of funny, fun, not fighting parts, and then fighting superhero tug at your heartstrings, then it makes you laugh, and then it scares you. There was a good balance of like me being frozen in my seat and me smiling, laughing awkwardly. I think they did a, a, a really good job um, balancing, like you're saying, like, oh, kind of, there's like some bummer stuff, and there's some really like hilarious stuff. So I think they did a really good job of like mixing in some serious emotions that you have to have after seeing something like Endgame, and then like, parts that made me literally laugh out loud because they were like awkward and they were silly or you know and very well timed. Did you cry at any point? No. No. And I didn't okay. feel like I was going to. Me neither. Except there were like a couple of heartwarming cries yeah. that I almost like maybe started a little moisture welling up in my eyeball but nothing like no big not end game. It was not definitely not end game. Thank God, because I'm still like emotionally ruined. I know. I was kind of. I was like, oh God, if because I don't think I ever like actually cried during end game. Oh my there God. Some close, I know, but I know you did. So I was like, oh God, if this is gonna be an emotional one. I like one. sobbed. Oh, like, I was ready to hug you if it if it you. happened. Oh, just so like, kind. Yeah. I didn't even tear up though, which is not to say that it wasn't good and there wasn't touching right. moments. Just it wasn't yeah, aggressive. Yeah, because it starts as we mentioned before we saw the movie. It starts after end game. And so you know, again, spoiler alert, Tony Stark is no more. I like how they dealt with that. I like how they had Peter Parker, what they had him do to deal with that and the, the story arc of him throughout the movie. I liked his progress and 
changes. Yeah, a lot of character development, I think. But they did such a good, so part of the reason why a lot of people love Peter Parker is because he's really relatable. He's like a young guy, and even in the comics, he remains young for the most part, and he's not like some old man Wolverine or something. They did a good job of like, here's some emotional growth for this character mm -hmm. that you know is like a baby, but also like, he just wants to touch mouths with the girl he likes. You know, like there's a really good balance of that stuff, which is great because, you know, if this, something could ever happen to this level. If a teenager could go through something as dramatic as what happened in Endgame, and then you have to go back and be a normal teenager, you have to find a way to address that. I think the movie did a good job. Yeah. I also liked the character of MJ. Obviously, you're coming at all of these movies from reading the comics and knowing a lot more about the characters. Like, you were already Sometimes, excited yeah. about her character. She did not have red hair. Spoiler <laughs> alert. Mm -hmm. Is that a spoiler? I don't know. No, I don't think that's a spoiler. But I really liked her as a character because she wasn't the stereotypical cute teenage girl in the movies that the boy has a crush on. It's like super beautiful and super made up and doesn't look like a teenager. Zendaya looks like a teenager, even though she's probably not at this point, but she did a good job of playing one. And she's just like this badass, not the girl that just wants to be told she's beautiful and that's why she's worth living. You yeah, know? She, if I could ever relate to like a teenage girl, I feel like, I, I like my favorite, not my favorite, but my often go-to cocktail party like fact that you should know is when you die, if you die in your house, your dog will eat you, no matter how good your dog is. When you die, if you die in your house, your dog will eat you, no matter how good your dog is. And there's a lot of like, wait, what? Oh God. Wow, okay, well, guess I haven't gone to a party with you yet. <laughs> wow. So there's, there's, yeah, you are so MJ. She, mm -hmm. So she has like a lot of dark humor, and that's like her awkward thing, and I just, I think it's very cute, yeah. They did a good job of making her sort of different and, and weird, but not like so weird that you're like, wow, like, oh, she's the weird girl. Like, like strong. She's like, yeah. I'm weird, and I'm strong, and I'm unique, and I'm cool, mm -hmm. and sure, maybe I like this boy. Doesn't matter. Yeah. I really liked MJ, but I find that like, self-aware feminism joke to be like really played out and annoying. Mm. But uh, I think that she, so, you know, canonically, MJ does a good job about being like a good, strong female character, and I think they're pointing her in the right direction, which is good. I mean, it's 2019. It seems like yes. it shouldn't be a big ask, but. Uh, what did you think about the special effects? I don't know how they do them. Like, they're so, when we saw the credits at the end, mm -hmm. they kept going forever because there are so many yeah. special effects, and I just, don't know how they work. My brain always wants to go super logical for some reason, even when I see superhero movies, and they're movies that are not, they're not real life. They're not supposed to be real life. They're not supposed to see, they're supposed to be an escape from real life. But somehow still my brain goes, that is not gonna work. Like, oh, they would not survive that. Oh, that person just showed up, like in Endgame when Captain Marvel just shows up out of nowhere. I'm like, <laughs> that was too easy. How did you just find them? That's not real. No, it's a superhero movie. It's not real, obviously. But I thought the special effects, and it's very like meta special effects. Mm -hmm. It's like special effects inception. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. And did you see Doctor Strange? No. no. That's Sorry. the only, it's okay. The, that's the only other movie I can think of that has special effects to this degree. Oh. And um, it was really, I thought, very visually. Like, of course, there's always special effects, like fighting special effects. But this one had, like, some visual effects that were really, really cool, I thought. Yeah. Would you see it again? I would see it again. It was funny. Normally, I don't leave movies thinking, oh, I want to go see that again. But because the lightning made the projector go out, uh, or whatever actually happened, and we watched like one minute of it a second time, and I noticed more things the second time we saw it. I was like, oh, actually it would be really great to go watch it again. What did you think? Yeah, I mean, I'm a serial like movie theater goer and superhero. You said serial, and after your party fact, I was worried where you're going. Uh, yeah, so I usually go and see, if I like the movie, I'll go and see it more than one time. But yeah, this was one In that, theaters? Yeah, in theaters. Like you'll pay sure. multiple, wow. Yes, I would see this movie again. I thought it was really good and really fun, and I think that there's a benefit to seeing Marvel movies, especially, God, there are 23 films in now, or whatever they are, and so they know to hide Easter eggs, and they know, you know what I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you miss every time, so mm -hmm. I think it's worth seeing again. And worth staying until after the credits, you turn to me, you're like, have you all never seen a Marvel movie before? Because as soon as the movie ended, I, probably half of the people left mm -hmm. the theater. So, so we can say there is, like keep watching, don't go anywhere until it's over, over. Yeah, like sit through 
all of the credits, every single 3D animator, you have to sit through all of it. Read every one of their names and think yeah. how amazing and how hard they worked on this. Mm -hmm. What Marvel movies would you say people have to see in order to fully understand Spider-Man Far From Home? Endgame. Well, see, I was going to say that before we went. I was thinking there's no way you could not see Endgame and see this and it would make sense. But I thought at the beginning they kind of did a good job of mm -hmm. a little bit summarizing things in an entertaining way so that if you came in totally cold, hadn't seen Infinity War or Endgame, you would somewhat figure it out. But I mean, you those would, are great movies, so see them. You would figure it out, but I don't think that you would be as emotionally attached and so yes. half of this movie would be like, eh, for you because yeah, you too. wouldn't care as much. Mm -hmm. Captain Marvel. I think you need to see Captain Marvel. Or watch it right afterwards. Uh -huh. Makes to a lot of sense. Um, and the other Spider-Man movie would be a good prerequisite. You don't have to see it, but it does make you care and appreciate the emotional journey that Peter Parker has taken. Like how many Spider-Man movies? The other there? one with Tom with Holland. It, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Not you all you don't need them. to go all the way back. Just yeah. watch the first one Tom Holland was in. Because, mm -hmm. you know, there's definitely more of like a carefree atmosphere in that one and also you get to see the relationship between him and Tony Stark which makes you care more about how this movie goes. And him and Ned and Ned is yeah. one of my favorite characters. Ned is funny. I mean all of these actors in the, the movie playing he's only teenagers. 22. Oh he's only 22? I looked him up. <laughs> we were talking after the movie last night how old is he because he does a really good job of being believable playing a teenager they all do but they're all of course older than teenagers for the most part. And I did have a couple moments where I'd look at him on screen and think, oh, he's an old man. Or not old, but like, I don't know. He could be 40 and I would believe you, but he's 22. He's 22. I looked him up. Well, I thought he was older than that. <laughs> you do a great job of looking like a teenager and yeah. looking mature all at the same time. Ned. Proud of you. Whatever his name is. Jacob. Sorry. It's Jacob. his real name. Jacob. Mm -hmm. So I liked the movie. Mm -hmm. You gave it four out of five. Radioactive Radio spiders. Radioactive spiders. <laughs> I'll give it. Four and a half radioactive spiders. Maybe, I don't know. It comes out on Tuesday, mm -hmm. July 2nd. So go see it in the theaters and then go over to the KGW Comic Pick of the Week YouTube channel because Destiny has posted a spoiler free review and then you're also gonna do a spoiler full review. Yes. Let us know what you think of the movie. Yeah, you should like tweet at us and stuff and let us know what you think about it. Leave us a comment and We'll see you back in the theaters because we'll be back there seeing it again. So mm -hmm. say hi to us if you're sitting next to us and share your popcorn. Okay, there you go. There was our review of Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, excuse the probably very echoey sound right now. I'm in a random empty room at work right now. Anyway, just want to tell you guys thank you so much for watching. Also, thank you for sticking with me here on my YouTube channel. If you're still here at the end of this very long video and a very long hiatus from this channel. I am fully aware of the fact that the last video I posted on this channel was also a Marvel movie review and do not worry, this channel is not just turning into a movie review channel. But I am determined to get this channel back up and running. I don't know if you know this, but I'm turning 30 in a couple of weeks and that for some reason just like lit a fire under my spidey senses to actually make more videos here. So I've already shot one maybe two more videos at this point, and I'm editing them, and do not worry, they will be coming soon, okay? I'm sorry. So, make sure you click that subscribe button and the little bell so you get notified whenever I post a new video. Give this video a thumbs up for fun movies and actually going out on the town and going somewhere and having a fun time. See you guys next time, bye!